Okay, for uh, 26 years of my life, I stayed with the Yamaha Drum Company and um, had some issues there when they changed the guard. You know, they had a man there named uh, Mr. Hagi, who is like the Hagi song. It's like the father of so many drummers, you know what I mean? And, and it was such a really, really, really cool cat. And uh, in Japan, they have a mandatory retirement age. So the new regime that came in kind of wanted to uh, switch things over. So anyway, so I left. Uh, now I'm with a fantastic drum company um, from Germany. And if you would have told me 10, 20 years ago, I'd be playing German drums. I'd be like, maybe I'd drive a German car, but I don't know about German drums. <laughs> but these, uh, they're called Drumcraft. This is the first time I've ever played and enjoyed playing on a birch kit. I always played maple, maple custom, blah, 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 blah. I did a whole tour, my last tour of with my band here in Europe. And I called the guys up, man, this drum kit is killing it, da-da-da-da-da. Thank you guys, you know, I'm thanking them for the drum set. It's like, what kind of maple wood did, did you use on this drums? I mean, all right? And he says, Poojie, the, the drums are birch. I went, no. He went, yeah, man, those are birch. I went, no. He said, look inside and look at that. They're I was like, wow. You know, so all I can say is these drums are so cool. The engineering is 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 incredible. And they got me to play drums that I thought I never would like, which is birch drums, you know. And I don't know, I don't know if this kit, this looks like the last kit I had, in fact, on the road. So it might be birch, but the, you know, it's I loved maple. it. It's this one. This one's a maple yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. All right, but I mean, I love the design of the lugs and love the fact that the drums are very, very open and and sing, and the fact that the re um, the reinforcement ring is actually built into the drum. They figured out a way to build it. It doesn't look like it's there, but it is there, the designer showed me. And um, so I'm really happy with these guys, man. You know, I'm really, really happy you know, with drum craft. I really like their drums a lot. And then uh, my cymbals uh, are made by Agop uh, Istanbul. And uh, all I can say about these guys is that I feel like I'm a part of their family. They take really, really good care of me. They have a set of symbols out now called, I think they're called Exist, right? And they're their low-end brand of symbols, okay? I went to the NAMM show this past year, and they have a new thing called R20, right? And I hit one of these crashes, and I went, wow. And I hit some of them, wow, right? And I'm like, so what is this like your new high-end line of symbols? He said, well, no, Pooji, actually, these are the cheapest symbols we make. And I went, you're kidding me. He said, nope, these are, this, this is the student model. And I went, you know, it's amazing. The, 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 the cheaper you guys make the symbols, the more, more I like them. So the quality of the craftsmanship is just so great that even the student symbols sound as good as the, the high, the high, high end symbols. You know what I mean? So, uh, and in fact, I'm going to, uh, you know, if we ever get them out of customs, uh, going to be, you know, using the, the, the student symbols on the gig because I like them that much. So Istanbul is, is a great company. Um, I've been with Vic Verth since I got, I, for eons, you know, and I can't even remember how long i I know Mr. Verth. He's a really, really cool, cool cat. Great, great, great company, and uh, and Remo. Interesting story there. I they thought for years that I was one of their endorsers, so they would send me like drum heads and stuff. And I had never signed a contract with them, but they considered me family, you know. Yeah. So same thing with Remo, who till till to this day I have not signed a contract with, but they still like give me the full ride and the whole thing because yeah. they're that cool, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, so Drumcraft, Istanbul, and Remo, uh, are, are things that, that, uh, I feel passionate about. And I have this bass drum beater, it kind of looks like a spatula, it's by a German guy too, whose name I can't remember, but he gave me this beater and said, you're going to love it. 
So I said, oh, okay, put it on the thing. And I've been using it ever since. And everybody goes, where did you get that? And I said, it's from some German cat, man. I don't even know, can't remember the cat's name. But if you can, it's like a, it kind of looks like a American catcher's mitt, but it's completely flat. And it hits completely flat on the, on the drum head. So I, I can't remember the cat's name. I would say his name, but I can't remember the cat's name. But he's like German dude, and he makes a great drum beat, bass drum beat. So those are what I endorse. That's a very, very good question. Okay, I'll put it to you this way. I've had three normal jobs maybe in my entire life. One was a newspaper boy. I got fired from that one. Uh, the other was a security guard that worked at a bank. Check this out, man. I mean, I'm like watching this huge bolt, like big as this wall, right? Okay, somebody comes in the bank. They're going to rob the bank. You press this button and the blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. And they come downstairs to the vault and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And I looked at this guy and I said, hey, man, if somebody comes down here to the vault and they have a gun, I'm helping them move the money. <laughs> okay? I'm helping them move the money wherever they want to take the motherfucking money. Okay? <laughs> Just deal with it. You have a very bad attitude. I said, and I think you're crazy if you think I'm going to protect somebody else's money that ain't my money. Well, you're wearing a gun. I said, I'll give them my gun. I'm not dying for your money. Were you crazy? Right? I went, I, you're fired. I went, fine. Bye. All right, so that didn't work out. So long story short, I'm really, really blessed that, that for a long time, I always have known what it, what it was that I was going to do. You know, I knew that, you know, uh, you know, my feeling always was that, okay, I don't know how I know how to play the drums. For some reason, God decided to give me this talent. I don't think that he would have given me this talent if he wasn't, didn't have a way for me to use it or didn't have some kind of plan for me to use it. So even when times have gotten hard, I've always, you know, and there have been some lean moments over the years, but I always go, no. No, he's God's gonna take care of me because I know that I I I don't know how I know how to do this, but it's like walking or talking or breathing. I know how to play the drums, so something's gonna happen. You know what I mean? So I have no idea. You know, my father was a professor. He was an educator. I had a lot of people who were professors and educators in my family. So maybe, but no nah, drums, music. You know. I'm lucky. Don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Music uh, and the music business, especially in the world we're living in right now, can be very, very frustrating. And it can seem very, very daunting. If you believe in your dream, don't give up on it. And also remember that you have to take that leap of faith and know that if you do take it, chances are good. I can't say 100%, but chances are good somebody's going to be there to catch you. You know what I mean? Don't try to become the big fish in the small sea. That's a waste of time. You know? And I feel sorry for the guys who are like, well, I'm the best drummer in my town. I'm the best drummer within, you know. No, but no one cares, you know. 
you have to go out in the world. I'm like when I'm talking to you, we're in Greece right now. You know, you have to go out. You have to be willing to show the world, people, what it is that you got to find out if you truly got something. They'll let you know. If you if you live in a community and you're a drummer, if your neighbors at some point don't complain about hearing drums, you're not practicing enough. Somebody should be pissed off. You know what I mean? And be willing to take that leap of faith. If you think that you can make it as a studio musician in America or wherever you are right now, get on a plane and go. You know, go to New York, go to LA, go to go to Tokyo, go to Paris, go wherever where the music really is going on. If you want to play with the big boys, you gotta go where the big boys are. If you're sitting around thinking that someone's going to discover you, yeah, all right, you might get a billion hits on YouTube, you know, like Justin Bieber, but that doesn't happen every day. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go where the action is in order to get in the game. You want to play in the big leagues, you gotta get to the big leagues and show them what you got. You know, and be prepared for whatever the people throw at you. Don't go around saying I'm a rock drummer or I'm a hip hop drummer or I'm a I'm a jazz drummer or I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a uh, we call that shit, drum and bass drummer. You know what I mean? It's okay to have your favorites. Nothing wrong with that. You want to be a musician. You know what I mean? Because to me that means just like having a driver's license, you can do many things. You can drive. You just give you to can't go around in a record car, but you can drive it. You know. But if you put yourself in a category, that takes away less work. That means you're gonna work less now because you're just this, or you're just that, or you're just that. You know what I mean? So keep your ears, your mind, everything open to everything that's going around you. You know, I feel sorry for guys who just play just one thing and they say, uh, then a country and western gig, you know, comes up. And Willie Nelson is going out on the road. He's gonna pay like a gazillion dollars a week. Oh man, I can't play country. You know, or so and so is going so. Oh, I can't play this, or I can't play. You know, blah 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 blah. I've done everything from country music to rock music to to, to jazz music to classical music to everything in between, because I look at it as all one body of music. It's okay to have your favorites, but the thing you want to be is a musician. Why? It's going to offer you more work. It's going to offer you more opportunities to work. You know? So I guess that would uh, be it. And honey, if you watch this, you can see I did shave, okay? So, I told you that I would shave, baby, and I did. I love you too. I listen to a lot of, uh, I don't know what you, if they still call it like alternative rock music, but I listen to a lot of rock music, just like guitar, bass, but still kind of singer songwriter has lyrics and stuff. I listen to a lot of that because I like the fact that there's still people playing live on those records. I listen to a lot of the underground, uh, Underground hip hop, a lot of underground neo soul type of records. I don't listen to many like jazz fusion type of records anymore, like I did when I was a kid, because uh, there's not too much going on, at least for me personally, in that world right now. Um, I don't listen to the smooth jazz records that they they make in America because. It's mostly just watered down uh, old R&B music that I grew up with as a child being played a lot of times really poorly by some saxophone player, you know? So I don't, I don't pay much attention to that stuff. 
So I try to listen to music that people still feel passionate about. You know what I mean? And you can see that the people really took time, care, and effort into making the music, even if they didn't sell like a billion records. You know what I mean? And I also listen to, you know, people who do sell a billion records, like, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce and, and you know, Alicia Keys and, you know, Lady Gaga and, you know, uh, Rihanna and Kanye West and all that stuff, too. Just to, you know, always, like I'm saying, you know, you don't want to get old ears. So just to hear what, you know, what the kids are listening to, why they're, why they're listening to it, you know what I mean? Just to see what's going on, you know, and be aware of what's happening, you know. Well, man, I'm here on, on Greece the first first week of uh, my spring tour, and uh, we're going to be out for about 15 days or so. My goal this year is to uh, actually get the current lineup of, of my band, um, which is Bobby Sparks on keys, Michael Patrick Stewart on trumpet. Uh, Keith Anderson on tenor and alto sax. On this tour, Keith couldn't make it, so I have a great uh, young guy from New York named Chris Hemingway playing sax with me. But my goal this year is to get the unit recorded. And my last record is a record that I'm kind of made, like I normally make my records, you know, I put a kind of, you know, rhythm section, this guy, this guy, and then, you know, I had Bobby play, and I had Keith solo, and I had Patches play. But this record, I want to get everybody together in the studio, like, and and record what we do, like, you know, on the gig. Uh, so I want to do that, and then I'm hoping to do a, a really good long well, after we get the new record done, a good fall tour. I'm looking at a tour period of uh, November 15th, I think, to December 15th. I'll be back in Europe again with my my band. This summer 2012 in June I'll be here playing with a great bass player named uh, Reggie Washington and uh, Jeff Lee Johnson he has a trio uh, and we'll be playing Reggie's new music so we'll be touring around so you know still to stay active and and just keep doing what I'm about you know keep playing music keep touring and and finding new places and new place people and and to play for and, and new experiences, you know. Use your imagination. If you hear something on a record or wherever, right, or iTunes pops or whatever, if you hear a piece of music, this is the point, use your imagination. Try to figure out, if you're a drummer, try to figure out what the drummer played uh, on your own. This will help you to create an identity for yourself. Do not Google the person, then go on YouTube and look for him and learn verbatim what the last man did. Why? Because we don't need 10 Chris Daves. We don't need 10 Dennis Chambers. We don't need 10 Vinnie Caliutas. Don't need 10 Poojis. Okay? Your identity, you must have an identity. And the way you get this is by using your mind using your heart and your soul, okay, to have an identity, to have your own sound. Looking at YouTube and learning what someone did verbatim is a waste of time and energy. 
And I would say this, and especially to the young gospel drummers, okay? It gets really boring. And I'm sorry no one has told you this before now, but it does. I don't care. Maybe all you guys can tell the difference between you, you know what I mean? But the majority of you, to the people who are listening who don't understand drumming, you all sound the same. Or the larger majority of y'all. You know what I mean? Same thing for rock drummers. Same thing for a lot of hip-hop drummers. The same thing for a lot of drum and bass drummers. You have to learn to sound like you. Stop copying and pasting other people's shit. Learn to play like yourself. For good or better or for worse, this is the only way you're ever going to have a career in the music business. Just telling you the truth, not trying to hurt your feelings. Just telling you the truth. And, and last, and last, and last, and probably the most important thing. Remember, if you have four guys and they all sound the same, the guy that the producer, the management company, the artist is going to pick because they all do the same exact thing is the guy who works for the least amount of money. Think about that. They will always pick the guy. If they all do the same thing, why why pay the guy over here 500 when you can get the same thing over here for 200 Ask yourself a question. Somebody calls me. They call Dennis Chambers. They call Chris Dave. They're calling us because we sound like us. Got to learn to sound like you. And with that, I bid you adieu. Peace. Fuji Bell for you, Groove, baby. There you go. Sweaty and shit. Oh man, brother, need to practice.